Hello, Dr. Croker here, and this is a guide to the Fell Court of Troya. This dungeon was included with patch 6.2, and here we get to explore the 13th reflection. Please like and subscribe, I'm releasing guides for every story dungeon and trial in the game, so you always know what's coming. Let's get started. This dungeon has some dazzling sights as you progress, but the first few trash pulls are rather dull. Let's move on to the bosses. The first boss is Evil Dreamers. For this encounter, you will face wave after wave of dozens of small evil dreamers that aren't very hard to kill, but they do have some mechanics. Sometime after you kill the first wave, you will see bright orbs around part of the perimeter. Each of these will shoot line AoE damage with a brief marker, so you should start to move aside as soon as you see the orbs. Later in the fight, the orbs will appear spread along most of the perimeter. In this case, it's easiest to run to the edge and stand between two orbs. Simultaneously, all players will have spread apart markers on them, so don't occupy a spot that another player is in. Unite Mare is a cast where the boss heads put large AoE circles all over the floor, covering the entire floor. You will also see a few orbs at the same time preparing to do their line AoEs. Simply kill one of the heads around the edge to create a safe zone and wait for the others to explode and for the line AoEs to go off. After many waves of heads to kill, there will be one large head in the center casting Endless Nightmare. You will see three AoE circles, but notice that one of them will have three heads moving toward it. That circle is about to get much, much larger. So the goal here is to get very far away from that one. After that goes off, the same thing will happen again, but this time, two circles will have heads moving toward them. Now make sure you are far from both of these circles. Now you get to step outside and get a better view of the 13th reflection. Pretty cool. The second boss is Beatrice. Early in the fight, she will cast Eye of Troya, which deals moderate damage to all players. Then, a circle of eyes will collapse into the center. You will need to move away from the center, then face outward to avoid the hit from this one. Later in the fight, this one gets a little crazy, but more on that later. Beatific Scorn is one where she slashes several lines into the floor. You should immediately run and stand near the last slash she made. After she makes all the slashes, the circles on the floor that she slashed will explode for heavy damage in the same order she slashed them. This is why you should stand on the final slash. Once the first one goes off, move there to safely wait out the others. Hush is a heavy hit on the tank. Just mitigate and heal through it. Void Shaker and Void Nail are two casts that occur simultaneously. It's just a large frontal cone AoE combined with spread apart markers. Just avoid the cone and other players and wait it out. Okay, now we're ready to talk about the second Eye of Troya. This time, there will be not one, but four collapsing circles. There will also be a donut AoE that extends right to the edge, making the center circle the only safe place. Oh yeah, and spread apart markers at the same time. So this is wild, so how do you handle it? First off, you need to be near the center because of the donut AoE and apart from other players. The four collapsing circles actually come in two pairs, so as you see the first pair collapsing, you can adjust your position and face away from both. Then as the second pair is collapsing, move and face away from them. She also applies a standard stack marker called Anti-Pressure, where all players need to stack. And this is often followed by Beatific Scorn, the slashes again. From here on, she'll repeat the same mechanics until killed. The third boss is Scarmiglione, familiar from Final Fantasy IV, as is the music and name of this dungeon. Anyway, he opens with Cursed Echo, which hits everyone for moderate damage and applies a bleed. Just as the bleed wears off, he'll cast Rotten Rampage. This puts circles randomly all over the place and spread apart markers on every player. There are many gaps between the circles though, just stand in one that doesn't have another player nearby and you'll be fine. All of these AoEs will apply Brain Rot though, and if you get to 3 stacks, you'll become a zombie. As the Rampage goes off, pieces of the wall around the edge will crumble away. Then he will cast Blighted Bedevilment, which is a knockback, and you want to make sure you are in front of a remaining piece of wall. If you aren't, you'll be knocked into Goo, which applies a long-lasting damage-over-time effect to your character. 
Blighted Blade Work is a cast where he flies upward, then points a laser on the floor. You will want to run to the opposite end of the arena, as this will put a very large AoE blast on that side. Just as the AoE goes off, you need to run back to the opposite side again, as he will cast Blighted Sweep, which sweeps the entire floor except what's behind him. Fire Damp is a simple tank buster he does, just mitigate and heal through it. Creeping Decay is a cast where the boss becomes untargetable and a new meter appears, showing his power. During this time, many weak adds will appear and various AoE effects will take place. Nothing challenging really happens here, it's really a DPS check to kill everything before his power fills up. I suppose this one is worth mentioning, where circles appear around the edge and every player has a spread apart marker. The outer circles will hit for damage before the spread apart markers will, so just stack in the middle until the outer circles go off, then spread apart. After this ends, he will do his heavy attack, which instantly kills the whole party if the meter was allowed to fill up. Otherwise, it's just some heavy damage and you move on. From here on, it's rinse and repeat until he's killed. And that's it for the Fell Court of Troya. Thanks for watching this video. Good luck, have fun, and see you next time.